What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are working on this pretty baby right here. And we are working on it for a very special friend of mine. Me and him go way back. We've been friends since high school. And he ordered this piece to be transformed into a bar cabinet. So we're gonna do that for him. All right, let's get flipping. Alrighty gang, so this is the piece that we are working on today. It's actually really cute. It's not that bad. It's got this sweet little key to open up the cabinet doors, which is really cute. And yeah, all in all, it's in great shape. I genuinely like the look of this cabinet, but my client wanted, uh, you know, something a little bit different. We're working off um, of these photos that he actually sent me to work with. Uh, this is kind of like the aesthetic that he's going for. So we're gonna aim to create something that would fit in this kind of thing. And I'm gonna show you guys how to fix this in just a minute. But first, we are gonna use a heat gun to remove all of this paint. I'm pretty sure the uh, previous owner said that it had a wax finish on it or that it was like a wax paint or something like that, which I've never heard of a wax paint. But if it had a wax finish on it, then this definitely worked very well for that type of finish and uh, it all peeled up very nicely. If you use a heat gun to remove paint, I highly recommend using caution because the tip of that gun does get very hot and it becomes very easy to uh, hit your finger or hand or arm on the tip of that. Um, but yeah, removing paint with a heat gun is super cool, super easy, and very satisfying, not to mention very eco-friendly because you are not wasting sandpaper to get all of that paint up. And you're not using any chemical strippers to get it up either, you're just using the heat of the gun and a little scraper. No chemicals or harsh products, so highly recommend doing. And then now we are going to go in for some light sanding. I'm going in with a 120 grit sandpaper and I'm using one piece of sandpaper for this entire top here. It honestly, I'm gonna use a heat gun from now on whenever I possibly can because yeah, one piece of sandpaper and only about 20 minutes of work for this entire top was pretty great. And then after I do 120 grit, I am gonna move on down, or up, I should I should say. It's moving down to a uh, finer grit, but up in the number. So 220, and we're finishing off with that. And then after everything's sanded, I am filling up this crack with some wood filler. So when I sanded it down, I made sure that that raised level of the crack was as low as the rest of the table. And then yeah, I just filled it in with some stainable wood filler. I have seen some little, you know, hacks, if you will, on either Instagram or TikTok or something where they put tape around the place that they're filling wood with wood filler and they, you know, don't have all that mess around the filled area, which I forgot to do for this, but I highly recommend doing that way the wood filler doesn't get on the rest of the piece. And then once I let that dry for a good few hours, I went over it with a 220 grit and then vacuumed the entire piece in preparation for painting. Usually I use an all-in-one paint by Melange, but I didn't have any in stock, so I just went ahead with uh, Home Depot's, or I think it was actually Lowe's uh, latex paint in black and it's a satin finish, and the first thing I wanted to do before getting started on that was prime. So I'm taking off all of the pieces that I don't want to be painted, and then taping up the rest of the stuff that I can't remove, and getting started with priming. I wanted to try rolling it on at first, but I just didn't like the coverage that I was getting with the roller. I couldn't get into all of the little crevices and everything, and so I decided to go in with my sprayer. I just, for whatever reason, don't like 
painting furniture anymore. I, I like spraying it instead. So I'm going in and taping off every bit of exposed wood that I don't want to paint over. And I'm using this tape that, I, or this uh, paper that I actually found in a piece. I found these, this like huge stack of papers in this uh, drawer in a piece. So I'm using that to cover the entirety of the exposed wood and then using tape to cover up the windows. And then we're gonna get on to spraying. So I got this tent from Wagner, it's a spray tent, and I haven't pitched a tent in years since I was a kid, so uh, it's been a hot minute, and it took me a little while to figure out how to do it, because I, I don't read instructions, I just kind of like figuring things out, I guess I'm impatient, but um, you know, I paid the price and did it wrong the first time, so I had to uh, redo it a little bit there, but I ended up getting it all sorted out in the end and crossing my uh, tent poles, which really helped. And then once we got it pitched, I moved the piece inside and started spraying. As soon as I painted these shelves, I realized that I meant to leave two of them unpainted. I was actually gonna sand them down and leave them, um, you know, just exposed wood. And so I rinsed off the paint and painted the other shelf that was going inside the actual like closed cabinet part and then set aside the two shelves that are going in the middle part of the cabinet so I can sand them down to natural wood. And now that the primer's all done, we're gonna leave that to dry safe in the tent and get started on this wine rack. So, instead of building my own wine rack this time, I decided to go and use, uh, you know, somebody's old wine rack from Facebook Marketplace. That way, I save money on materials, I save money on time and effort to, like, you know, actually cut the wood for the exact size and shape of the wine and all that sort of stuff. Don't really have to do much measuring on that point. And um, yeah, and it's way more eco-friendly because you're not buying new materials, you're reusing old ones. So bonus on that. So the first thing I wanted to do was take it apart so that I can use two of these bad boys to go across the shelf. And I am going to be cutting a little bit of the edges off just to make sure that each piece fits kind of like flawlessly from one to the other because they are going to, I'm going to want them to look like one solid piece of wood going across there. So I'm going to be using a little bit of wood filler, a little bit of paint, and some cutting to make that happen. So the first thing I wanted to do was to measure out how much space is in between each wine bottle and that way I can figure out how much of the ends to cut off because I know that each end of the wine rack is a little longer so I needed to measure it out and make sure that it was equal spacing so that it wouldn't look, you know, irregular or anything like that. And so I measured it out and marked where I was going to cut and then I did the same to each piece so that they would fit flawlessly from one to the other.
When marking up my pieces, I did make some wrong marks, so I made sure to fill in the pieces that I needed to cut off. That way it was very clear to me what parts I needed to cut and what marks were just mistakes. And before I cut, I just did a few dry cuts making sure that my blade was correctly lined up to the line that I had marked. And I wanted my blade to be on the outside of the line that I drew so that it cut right on the line and not you know, before the line or too much over or whatever the case may be. I just wanted to make sure that it was right on that line. So as I mentioned, I wanted this to flow, like each piece to flow one into the other very fluidly, smoothly, without any, you know, hitches or shows that it was two pieces put together. So I went in with my little small miter saw and cut off the bit so it would look really nice and rounded and just flow one right into the next. And then to make that edge rounded, I went in with my little router and just rounded out the, the little bitty piece at the end there to make sure that it looked nice and fluid. Once everything was cut to the correct size, I went in and filled all the little holes that we got going on here to make sure that, it, you know, the holes weren't showing. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, yeah, and then I went in and uh, sanded them later. So yeah. So as I said before, I'm using a uh, latex paint because I didn't have any all-in-one paint uh, in stock, so I just used a simple black latex paint from Lowe's, and I am putting it on top of a no-sand primer. It's my favorite primer to use whenever I do need one, and uh, I'll make sure to include that in the description below. But yeah, we're just getting covered all around here. and. Uh, here you're about to see me get um, stung by a bee. Enjoy. But anyways, the show must go on, right? So I did three coats of this paint, making sure to get all of those nooks and crannies in there. There was a lot of edges and like trim and detail and all that sort of stuff. So I made sure to get all of those spaces and then I painted the little wine rack biddies right here. And uh, yeah, let that dry, put on a second coat and then the third right after that and we were pretty much home free. For the wood, I know that he wanted this piece to be, um, you know, really dark, really black. He really likes black, so um, I went in with some black stain because I, I just like how the wood looks. I like how it shows through. It kind of looks like, you know, almost burnt, kind of gives it that burnt effect, which I really, really like. If I had a blowtorch, I for sure would have done that, but you know. You, you you work with what you got and uh, what I don't got is definitely a blowtorch. So uh, we're we're working with some some black stain which definitely did the job pretty well, I think. For the sides of the piece, I am also doing that black stain color, and um, for the top, I am using a dark walnut, 
and I am applying it with the same cloth that I used to put on the um, the black stain that way it kind of like mixes in together and sometimes I get a little black accent in with the dark walnut and it just kind of adds like this really cool kind of depth to it that I I at least I think like when I look at it I, I you know think that it looks pretty cool So once everything is dry for the wine rack, I am marking where like the the true middle of the um, of the rack is like on the side so that I can mark on the bottom. Once these things are glued into place, I can mark on the bottom where to screw in exactly. And uh, that way I can screw precisely where I need to screw just to make sure that they're really held into place perfectly. To make sure that these pieces were aligned, I used the old wine rack to line them up. That way they were perfectly separated so that the bottle would fit, you know, right into place there. And uh, then I used a little bit of wood glue and then clamped them on down there so that they would stick. And once it was dry, I got to put it in the screws. And now we have just some final touch-ups. I'm scraping the glass with a little razor blade here, making sure that the glass is nice and clean and free of any paint residue or anything like that. For whatever reason, the primer seemed to leak underneath um, the paint, and I, I don't know why, but it did. So we're scraping off the little bits of that and making sure they're all nice and clean. And then I put on the uh, hardware that I took off and yeah. Now all that's left is to put on a wax top coat on everything and call it a day. But before I show you guys the finished product, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that you guys enjoyed this and learned something along the way. But next weekend, I am participating in the workshop challenge hosted by Le Vintage Furniture and it's where we give you a little tour of our workshop and I'm doing something a little special so make sure to stay tuned for that. Also coming out this weekend on Sunday, yes, that is right, we are doing a two video weekend here. For Earth Day on Sunday, I am doing an Earth Day video special where I'm gonna show you guys how to be an eco-friendly furniture flipper. So make sure to go over to my page and set a reminder for that video. It is so, so important now more than ever that we do everything we can to stay eco-friendly in all aspects of our life, especially our work. But anyways, stay flipping guys. Oh,